Alright, this is Uncle Jam back at it with another resource pack video. In this video, we are going to cover alternate mob textures. As you can see, I've set a few examples here. Now, this method requires Optifine to be installed into your game, but other than that, it is completely vanilla. So you can make mobs randomized, such as these pigs here, which are just a random assortment of different textures. You can also set the weight value such as this polar bear here, which is much more rare than all of the white polar bears. You can also set a per biome setting, which I've done for the pig. So every time it's in a jungle biome, it will spawn brown, imitating a boar. And I've also done the creepers to make them kind of blend in more with each biome that they're in. So as you can see, uh, they change color based on the biome they're in to make them a little more scary. Some of them are a little off, but you get the idea. Um, so yeah, that's how though the, uh, you can do that. And also you can do a height parameter. So if a mob spawns below a certain height, it will have a spe specified texture. And so I've done the creeper again to make it blend in with the stone. And also we'll go over more complex textures, such as the wolf, which have when it's angry and when it is tame and making sure that they will link up to the same uh, textures. So we'll go over all that in this video. So let's get into it. All right, so the first thing you wanna do is locate all of the textures that you want to create. So we're gonna head into our resource pack folder. If you don't know how to get here, check out episode one in my series. Head into assets, into Minecraft, and head into textures. Now all of the mobs are located in entity. So we're gonna head inside of entity. Now you'll notice that inside of entity there are some subfolders with different mobs, such as cow, which is within a subfolder. But then there's also some mobs such as chicken, which is not within a subfolder. Now you have to keep this in mind when you're editing your textures. I will explain later when we're installing our textures into our other folder why we need to keep this in mind. So I'm going to edit the cow texture. So I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to open up the texture with an image editing software. Now edit your texture to whatever you want it to look like. So I'll do that and I'll get right back to you. Okay, so there we go. You can see I've changed the color of my cow to make it a little bit lighter. Now we need to export this image. So head over to export, make sure it's a PNG file. And now you want to name the document, whatever mob you're editing to. No spaces or anything, just a two at the end. And you have to keep this name um, correct. So if you're doing pig, it would be pig two and so on. So if you wanted to do more textures than just two, you would do the next one three. So I'm gonna actually do four, or three variants and I will show you what I mean. Okay, so I've done all my variants here. You can see I have cow two, cow three, and cow four. So when you're editing your mob, make sure you keep the name exactly as it is found in this folder with a number indicating the variant number starting with number two because number one is gonna point towards the original texture. So we start with number two, then to number three, then four. Now we need to install these into our pack. So we're gonna head back out of this folder here. Back into entity, back into textures, back into our Minecraft folder. Now you're gonna need a folder in here called MC Patcher. If you have one already, that's good. If not, you may need to create a new folder. So just create a new folder and call it MC Patcher. Let's head inside. Now you may have nothing in here. This was from a previous tutorial. And you want to create a new folder within MC Patcher and call it mob. So we have inside of MC Patcher, we have a folder called mob. Now this folder needs to be the exact same as entity. Let me explain what I mean. Okay, so I've got the entity folder pulled up here. And what I mean is this everything inside of this entity folder has to remain the same inside of this mob folder. So because I'm editing a cow, I have to actually create a new folder in here called cow. 
and put all of my textures inside of this folder, which I will do. However, if I was editing, say, the chicken, the chicken's just directly inside of this folder, so I would just put my variants directly in. So the path has to be the same. I hope I'm being clear. Just think entity equals mob. Those are the same folder paths. You want to keep everything the exact same in terms of where it goes. So if you were doing the creeper, you would create a new folder called creeper and put all of your textures inside. Whereas if you're doing the blaze, you would just insert your variants directly into this folder. Okay, let's move on. So now that we have our textures installed inside of our mob folder underneath cow, these textures will actually already work automatically in the game. So let's head in and check that out. So here we are back in game and you can see all my other custom textures have gone away. That's because those were in a different pack. So I'm going to show you the cows now. So if we spawn in right away, we get a blue cow, black cow. There's my new cow. And you'll see we get an assortment of random colors of cows. So that is a simple way to do the random textures. You don't have to create any text documents or anything like that. Just create your textures and put them into the correct path corresponding to that entity file within the mob folder. And you're good to go for random textures. But let's say you want to edit some of the parameters of the texture. Well, I'll show you how to do that now. Okay, so here we are back in our cow folder and we need to create a text document in order to add in some parameters. So I'm gonna open up text edit for Mac. On Windows, you can use notepad. I'm gonna make it a plain text document and on Mac, I'm gonna change the encoding to Western Windows Latin one. Just head to preferences and open and save. So let's start off. I have an image that I created, which I'll show you. And we will start off with the required parameter, which is skins. Now you'll notice after all of the parameters, there's a dot and then an N value. That N value is the rule number. So the game is gonna read our document in order of the rules you specify. So you wanna start with rule number one and go down the list with as you add in more and more rules. So our first rule, and now we write the skins we want this rule to address. So we have three skins, which I created, cow two, three, and four. And we also have the default skin, which is skin number one. So if we want it to address all those skins, we're gonna put one, two, three, and four, just like that, with spaces in between. And now we want to add in a, our optional parameter. So we'll start at the top of the list and we'll go with weights and we add in which rule we want it to correspond to. So a dot one equals. Now we want to add in four weights, which are going to correspond in order to those skins we specified up top. So for the first one, I'll put five. The second one, I'll put five. Third one, five. And the fourth one we'll make really rare and we'll put one. So what it's gonna do is it's going to add up all these. So it's gonna get to 16 and in 16 cows, It'll display the first texture five times, the second texture five times, third five, and the fourth texture only one time, which is the blue cow. So the blue cow will be very rare. So now let's save our document. Hit save, and we want to name it the name of the mob we're editing, the texture. So ours is cow dot properties. There we go. We're gonna change the encoding to Western Windows Latin one and make sure this box is unchecked. We want to keep it a dot properties file. And we click save, and there we go. Now let's install it into our pack, and we will head into the game and reload our pack. So, may not be noticeable right now, but it somewhat appears that there are fewer blue cows. So let's just test it out by spawning a bunch more down here. Or maybe I'll do it in the cage, just to keep them contained and as you can see we are getting very few blue cows not super rare but definitely fewer than we are getting of the other kinds as to be expected from our document that we specified so that's the weights parameter let's move on to biomes okay so here i am back in the document i'm going to remove my last weights parameter and 
I'm going to remove the skins we have specified. So now we want to create a biomes parameter. So that's going to apply specific skins in specific biomes. So I'm going to set multiple rules just to show you how that works for this one. So skins on the first rule we'll do is four, which is my blue cow. And now we want to type biomes. And we're going to relate that to the first rule by putting the dot one. So we want the blue cow to appear, we'll say in the jungle biome. There we go. So that'll be our first rule. Now let's create another rule. So we'll type skins dot two because this is our second rule. And we'll do cows two and three. We want to display in the biome of second rule, again, because we are relating to our second rule of the desert. There we go. And maybe we'll leave it at the two rules. So it's going to display the blue cow in the jungle and it's going to display the two and three textures, which are my custom ones I made in the desert. And that's what's going to happen. And everywhere else that's not the jungle or the desert, it will display the default cow texture. So let's save our document, head into the game and test that theory out. So let's reload it. Right away, you can see all these cows are now texture two and texture three, which are my two custom cows because we are in a desert biome. Now, if I spawn in the jungle here, we get blue cows, no matter where we spawn in the jungle. And if I spawn in another biome that's not the desert or the jungle, we get the default cow texture. So as you can see, you can make some pretty complex rules with these biome texture. And with the creeper that I showed earlier in the video, it was using a complex document with the biome parameters as well as the height parameter, which I will show you next. So let's get into the height parameter. Okay, so we're back in our document here. I'm just going to remove all my previous parameters. And we will say the blue cow again. We'll use the blue cow. It's nice and easy to see. We want to display a min height, which we will type. That's our next parameter. Rule one. And we'll say the minimum height is zero. And the max height now. For rule number one, we will say is 50. So what this will do is in between height zero and 50, it's going to display the blue cow texture. Anywhere else, it will display the default texture. That's because we haven't specified textures two and three anywhere in this document. So it's just gonna go to the default, but if it's in between zero and 50, it will display the blue cow. So that's how this height parameter works. You can set your mins and max depending on what you want for your specific needs. So let's save the document, head back in here, and we'll reload the game. And you'll see they all turned to the default texture. And that's because we are on Y level 56 right now. So if we pop down the hole here, now we are below Y level 50, and we spawn some cows, you'll notice they're all blue. So that's the height parameter. Now that covers all the parameters. So maybe I will show you a quick overview of that creeper document if you want to get an idea of how you can use some of these parameters in a real life situation. All right, so here's the creeper properties. Now I did not create this properties file. It was from a resource pack that I found. I can't quite remember which one it was. I just edited it to my own personal uh, preference. So as you can see, I'll explain a bit what's going on. We have multiple rules here separated by spaces. So you can see skins one, number two, three, four, and they go down the list as all the different rules. And you can see that there is a specified biomes for each skin is what's going on here. So skins three, and you can see the skins over here. These skins I did create. I just edited uh, the default skin and changed a bit of the shading to get the proper color. And yeah, you can see they are each going towards different biomes. So that's how this uh, creeper uh, document is working. So if you want to create one like this, you can go ahead and do so. 
Okay, so I just thought I'd let you know a little bit about the more complex textures, such as the wolf and some of the other mobs that have separated textures or multiple textures for the mob, such as a spider, which has its eyes as well as its body. So how that works, here's my wolf demonstration. I have a second wolf texture. And the only thing is, is you just want to make sure all of the textures that you make that are the same color. So as you can see, all these are brown are all the same number. So this is wolf two, wolf tame two, wolf angry two. And the game is guaranteed to link all of these textures up. So if I made this say wolf angry three, it wouldn't know to put this one with these other two. Now that may seem obvious, but it can be confusing when you get into more complex uh, textures and when you start having a lot of variants. So just keep that in mind with these more complex textures. I hope that helped you guys out. That's gonna do it for this uh, alternate animal skins video. Uh, if you'd like to see some more videos in the future, hit subscribe and have a good day.